Hi everyone. For well over 3,000 years, people have been talking about right angle triangles. They talk about the sides and the angles and things. You can go back to the Babylonians, you can go back to all your Greek and your Latin history, and you speak, people are talking about right angle triangles. So when we get to trigonometry, it's been around for a long time, an awful long time. So let's have a look what's going on with triangles. If I take a, a triangle and I have an angle of it on, of 20 degrees, if I put an angle there at 20 degrees and have a look at that triangle, what's happening with the triangle? You've got three sides, and in this case, one of them would be quite short, one of them would be quite long, and then you get the one that's the longest of all. Now really, we talk about the one that's longest. Most people have no trouble, but that's called the hypotenuse. So the longest one is just the hypotenuse. So that's an easy one to talk about. Let's not talk about the other sides for a moment. For a long time people knew if, say, I compared the length of that side with 20 degrees to the length of that side, you can see that that one there is a lot shorter than that one. I talk about Mr Bean method. When Mr Bean measures things, he measures things like this with his hands and he gets it very inaccurate. But I like the Mr Bean method because instead of grabbing our ruler, you can see what's going on. So this one is only that long, whereas this one is a lot longer than that one. So if I wanted to compare the length of that side to the length of that side, I could write it down as a fraction. And really all we're talking about is fractions. Trouble is though, a lot of people struggle with fractions. One of the first set of videos I made were on fractions. I actually made them uh, a lot for my family and friends, this one just knew how many people struggle with fractions. So let's have a look. This one could be that fraction, that, that could be the numerator, and that could be the denominator. So I could compare those, and these markers are lots of five. So five centimetres, so there's five, 10, 15, 20, and then we go across here and I made this one 30. Need to make the diagram big enough so you can see it, but not, not too big. When I went up here, this is about 11. So to go across the bottom, we can say how long is the bottom? How long is that side that's over here? And it's about 30. How far was it going up here? It's about 11. It's not deadly accurate, but it's rough enough so you can see what's going on. So when we're talking about 20 degrees, so we could even say the words, we were talking about 20 degrees. Let's change pens. So if I was talking about 20 degrees, and I wrote a fraction for it, I could say that one's going to be about 11, and that one's going to be about 30. And I'd have a fraction for that. And a lot of the times it's easier to store it as a decimal, but for the moment we're just going to talk about the fraction. So if I compared the length of that side and I wrote that as the numerator, and I compared the length of this side and I wrote it as the denominator, and put the two numbers there, we're talking about 20 degrees. But what are we talking about 20 degrees? Are we talking about the hypotenuse? No, we're talking about these two here and those two only and looking at those. Now, instead of saying talking about 20 degrees, a long time ago someone said, let's get an expression that tells everyone we're talking about those two sides for 20 degrees. And someone came up with the idea of tan. Now, if you go over the circle over here, you can do all your trigonometry without understanding this. But I decided to make a video of it because I wanted people to, some people really know, need to know the details and why we're doing what we're doing. And even when I'm teaching in class, I don't go through much of this. And this could be quite a long video for those who are interested in watching it. And then we'll get on to how we use it. So if I get to a circle, and I put a straight line against the circle, so it just touches the circle, that's called a tangent. So a simple word was, how do we relate a circle to a tangent? So if the tangent was coming down this way, most people will draw the tangent there. We've got a right angle triangle from the line joining the centre to the edge. Of course, that's a radius. And once we get that right angle triangle there, we can have the, uh, the right angle, the rest of the triangle comes across here. So if I was talking about this number here, which is that number there, I haven't got 20 degrees here. So if I was comparing that one with that one, comparing that one with that one, someone said it might be a good idea to call it a tangent. Who knows um, what sort of original discussions they had, they might have even had arguments about it. 
So instead of running the whole word tangent, people shorten it over time and just become tan. So we're talking about two sides of a right angle triangle, where that's a numerator and that's a denominator. That's called a tan of 20 degrees. So if I go to this one over here, and I want to compare that side with that side, and by the way, from the start, this one here is the longer side. You can see it's the longer side. So that's called the hypotenuse, which also comes from the Greek word, which is a very similar word to that. And there's a bit of discussion about what it means, but it talks about stretch under and different things are possible. But not about hypotenuse today. For a long time, people had no problems. The longest side of a triangle is called hypotenuse. So if I get the length of that one, you can see here it's 5, 10, 15, looks like about 17. If I get fussy, it's probably about 17 and a half. This one is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So if I wanted to write down the 10 of 30 degrees, I'd write it down as the 17 over the 30. Now let's have a look at what's actually going on here. It gets annoying when you start talking about numerator, denominator, which way, what are you talking about? Where are things coming from? Where are these numbers positioned? Simple word in real life, if you're sitting in class or you, and you've got someone next to you, the person that's next to you is called the adjacent. Bit of an unusual word. I suppose I look out the window here, I'm at home, and I look across the road and I can see there's a house adjacent to that house, and adjacent just means next to so let's have a look at what's going on here. If I wanted to know which side was adjacent to the 20 degrees, not to this angle here, that would be talking about 70 degrees. But this one here is 20, this one is adjacent to the 20, and that one's adjacent to the 20. But this one already had a name called the hypotenuse. So then they decided to call this one the adjacent, because it is actually adjacent to the 20. And of course, if you're sitting in class, you can have someone adjacent on this side and someone adjacent on that side. So it all works the same. But you call one of them, in this case, the hypotenuse, and the other one the adjacent. So when we talk about this rule here, the number of 30 is called the adjacent. And everyone shortens it down to just abbreviate it to ADJ for adjacent. And the one over here, had to come up with a special name. So this one was really obvious that it couldn't be that one, it had to be this one was adjacent. This one over here is called the opposite. So if I stand here and I'm near my front door and I look out, there's a house across there from me, they are the house that, they, that are opposite me. Next door I've got a house adjacent there, I've got a house adjacent there, so they're both adjacent. But across the road from me, looking out across to there, I see the opposite. So if you're looking out across from the 20, I like to put an arrow to try to help students understand it. That 11 here, let's move it out the way for a moment, is called the opposite. Now a lot of times we just shorten it down to OPP instead of writing the word opposite. So on the top, on the numerator goes the opposite, and on the bottom of the fraction goes the adjacent. So someone can say, I've got a right angle triangle, and I've got the 10, the 20, and they're talking about those two sides there. So if I come to this one here again, right next to the 30 degrees, let's go to this side here. That's already called the hypotenuse, so next to the 30 is also called the adjacent. And then if we go across from the 30, looking opposite, it's like me standing at my front door and looking out the other direction. This number over here, this length over here, is called the opposite. So let's go back to this one, the 10, this one is called the opposite, and this one here is called the adjacent. So the word tan comes from tangent and we shorten it down to tan. Then we can look at the other side. So this video could go on for a long time and I'm thinking how much will I go on with. I will show you one thing more though. If someone had a bow, if I had a bow and arrow here, that was my bow and I had the arrow pulled out to shoot it. There's your bow and from the ancient languages um, came up with the word sinus and some people in the, uh, I can't remember which one, I think it was in the Latin, it was called chord. This line here, is ref and sinus and chord are referring to the string of the bow, or the chord, the piece of material that comes down the bow, the chord. So chord meant putting a line across the bow, and then sinus was also a word for putting that chord there as well. So over a period of time, people started talking about this as a sinus, 
I think you can actually go to various languages and still see the language, the word there. So when we're talking about the opposite, this one's the opposite, they made up a new word, and this one was called the sinus, but we didn't call it the sinus. They started referring to it as sine. So if we had the sine of 20 degrees, we're talking about, in this case, we're still talking about the opposite on the numerator. So the numerator, the top of the fraction is the opposite for 10, and the top of the fraction is also the opposite for sine. But something very different took place. This one here was 11 on the opposite, and instead of comparing it to the adjacent, we now compare it to the hypotenuse. So sometimes it's handy, that you, you, or in real life, you only have the numbers for the opposite and the hypotenuse, or you have a number for the hypotenuse, you want to figure out what the other one is. So this is about opposite and hypotenuse. So I could write this down as opposite and hypotenuse. So this one would be 11 over, and if I go across here, remember it's only approximate, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, looks like about 32. So sin, people will say sin is actually from the word sine, so most math teachers call it sine. So if I come down to this one here, we've got the sine of 30 degrees. And again, this one will be, we're going to this time compare the opposite with the, or the length of the opposite. When we say opposite, we mean the length with the hypotenuse. So on this one, my opposite would be 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. Actually, if I was fussy, it's about 17 and a half. And across here is about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and it looks like about 35. I actually know from, if I accurately measure it, this one would be 17 and a half. So that's a nice easy one to be able to compare what the opposite is to the hypotenuse. And then after that, without going any further, came another one which we call cosine. And some of you would also remember we talk about complementary angles and complementary angles add up to 90. And there's a relationship between the sine and the cosine. If this one's 30, that one's 60. And because of that 30 and the 60, we call the last one a cosine. So you could have written the word cosine as a whole word, cosine, but then people abbreviated it just to be cos. Don't want to go any further on what it is. Where are these numbers stored? On all of our calculators, you get a button that says sine, you get a button that says cos, and you have a button that says tan. So the button that says sine has stored the numbers when we're comparing the length of the opposite to the length of the hypotenuse for any particular angle. The tan is the button that stores the length of the opposite compared to the length of the adjacent. Remember, it says just a fraction. But for the calculator, it will be stored as a decimal. So when you put it in your calculator, you'll get it as a decimal. And the last one, though, I'm not going into length here, is the cos or the cosine. That instead of comparing the opposite to the hypotenuse or the opposite to the adjacent, it's comparing the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And that's where we get all our tricks from, all our trick values from. Thank you.